Dubai Sports and Scott Magazine proud to present the 2015 Beach World Ultimate Championships. And WCBU 2015 wraps up with this mixed gold medal game between the Canadians and the Germans. Where are the United States? Well, yesterday in the semifinals, Team Canada eliminated the USA mixed team in the most dramatic fashion. Universe point, some controversial calls. We'll get into the nitty gritty of the decision making that went into Canada arriving here into the championship game, but it's Canada and Germany, two teams that have really played well week, deserving of being here in the title game, and we're looking forward to the final championship contest here on the beautiful beaches in Dubai with two great voices of Ultimate, Brian Jones and Megan Tormey, and then with Leffler and guys. Not the matchup that we maybe expected, but it should be still be fun. It's going to be a great time out here. Team Canada, Team Germany, Team Germany. A couple of, uh, of the last Beach Worlds actually was competitive coming in and, and, and facing up against the United States. And so they're re rearing and ready to go. And Team Canada is always a fiery bunch. Going to be led by Jeremy Norton, who's been throwing a lot of good discs all around. Send it down to the field for the pregame introductions. Thomas Thomas. Yeah. 
Here we go, it's Canada and Germany for the mixed title. Megan, you are the one of the three of us who has spent time in Germany, experienced the ultimate scene there. This is our first glimpse of this German mixed team. What can you tell us about the German ultimate community and what do you expect from this matchup? A lot of individuals hail from Munich where the German program is incredibly strong. We're seeing a huge contention, contingent from the Woodies and the Wood Chicas. That's the open and women's team in Munich that's very, very dominant. So we're seeing a lot of players who not only have had an opportunity to play together quite often, but are used to playing at very high level, high caliber games. Top that off with the fact that to compete on this team, you had to try out not once, not twice, not three times, but four different weekends. They took, a, they took a squad to a tournament to take the very best of the best. And one of the tournaments they went to was in zero degrees. So they were playing in the middle of the winter. That's how they held their beach tryouts. So although these individuals haven't had a lot of opportunity to play on beach, they have had to play in very tough conditions. So they are battle tested. Brian, one of the first comments you made just looking at the two teams lining up was this German team has great size. And they have the athleticism that we've seen across the international stage to match up against Canada. It's going to be exciting to see what they can do. I've gotten a chance to see teams like Bad Skid last time at WUGC, excuse me, uh, just last year at Lecco in Italy. And they have a tremendous amount of young talent I know a lot of those players aren't here, but it's indicative of a German program that's on the rise. Germany captained by Rue Weitzel, who's been a legend in the beach for Germany. Jeremy Norden leads the Canadians, and here we go. The final of our seven championship contests. Yesterday started with mixed masters and women's masters. USA prevailing in both of those. This morning, the American Grandmasters team came from four down to score five straight to beat Sweden. And the Open Masters team, the U.S. was dominant over Canada. That's going to sail just out of the reach of Matthew Berg in an opening point giveaway. Germany will take over. And after all the Masters competition, we saw the USA women prevail in a thrilling conclusion. Universe point over Russia. The USA men taking care of business with a dominant performance against Great Britain. But no USA here in this mixed semifinal because of what happened yesterday, guys, in a semifinal that we got to cover and watch. Certainly controversial finish. Both teams could have made plays before then to get the win, so you know, both sides certainly frustrated with the way that game finished. Canada happy to be playing today. USA, winner of the bronze medal. Your, your 24 hours later thoughts of how that semifinal game wrapped up, Brian. Really unfortunate in the way that happened, and I think it's something that could have potentially been prevented with observers, and that's an opinion that can be very divisive in this ultimate community. Germany turns it just back over. Canada will have it. Jeremy Norton will pick up. And Norton, the center of the controversy yesterday. And yeah, and, and at the same time, I want to say he shouldn't be at the center of the controversy because that's a call that anybody could make. And yes, it was on him, but it's such a split-second decision. It's likely that he did feel contact. I wouldn't expect Jeremy Norton to actually go and intentionally try to cheat in any fashion but it's just too tough to actually tell what happened on that play, and so he called the foul, and it's unfortunate. At the same time, Team USA got the disc back and had a chance to go up win. I agree with Brian, to err is human, and there's only so much we can take in in a fraction of a second instant replay, of course, rendered, uh, renders us right or wrong. Even Matthew umpires. Bird to Julia Mullins, and Canada scores first. To finish my point, even umpires and referees make bad calls at times. So even with observers, we'll never know what that call would have been. Um, but replaying it, it sure is a very clean D. One of the players I've enjoyed watching so far for Team Canada, Yolan Cabot, he had an intensity and, and, and just a kind of a they talk about one of the things that you want in spirit of the game and the basic joy of play, and Cabot just looks like he's always chasing after the disc and just excited to keep going for it and never giving up, never surrendering the fact that he may not get there. 
and that type of intensity and, and willingness to go after it is exciting to watch. Chris Cowper Smith to pull for Canada. Now these teams met once in pool play. They both were seven and one in pool B. Finished tied for the top spot. Germany beat Canada 9-7 in the meeting. Germany lost a game to Sweden 11-6, but still won the pool. Germany getting a deep shot here, beating Russia in the quarterfinals and then winning 6-3 over Portugal in the peak of the win yesterday. Canada beat the USA 6-5. Germany beat Portugal 6-3. A tied 1-1 here. Both teams experiencing much more fluid offenses, understandably so, with a much less win being a factor today. I think we have to kind of, as usual, look at this game as it's one where we throw out the past results. Canada is a team that's going to come here and not have the cohesiveness that Team Germany has had, having those four tryout weekends being a country that can meet a little bit easier. Canada just is a combination of East and West squads and they're in the middle of a harsh winter. They're not gonna be able to meet very successfully to get the job done. So Canada would be building through the week. They are hoping to play their best game here. And I think all bets are off for who's gonna win this one. Germany pulling in the red. Arne Reusch. Norden just such a key figure and immediately unleashes seeking Cabot. The defender Michael Remy can't stop Cabot from coming down with a disc. Cabot to space for the score. For a moment it looked like he overthrew Jordan Marin, but she made up the gap and laid out for Canada. We've seen the wind die down, and so that throw just a half an hour ago, Evan, may have actually just gone right into the sand and we wouldn't have had the chance for the catch. But it's very still conditions relative to what we've seen with a sandstorm the past day. Now crystal clear. It is picture perfect right now. Here on the beach, the edge of the city of Dubai. Any skeptic about this location, I think in experiencing this week would realize that this has been a sensational spot to hold this event. A lot of the players who were in Italy 2011 at previous Beach Worlds before that have said they think this is the most smoothly run World Beach Ultimate Championships they've experienced. That's a great grab by Melissa Zlock. To Thomas Zormeyer and then to the end zone incomplete. Josh Marin, the twin brother of the Canada goal scorer of the previous point, restarts play. Edwards back to Marin. Laying out Aaron Daly. Marin clad with a white headband and the intimidating eye black. Oh, a little too far ahead. The short flip from Epperson. Incomplete. And Canada calling an injury here. Slow to get up on that play. Jonathan Edwards will call for a sub. And on the near sideline, Tyler Smith goes running onto the field. This Canadian team beat Ireland 10 6 in the quarters. And then won that controversial game against the United States, six to five. So 
so many more layouts on the mark on the beach than you do on the grass. A lot of desperation, and sometimes the layouts can be good or bad or open things up for the offense to get an easier pass. Another layout landing face flat. Cowper Smith didn't come up with a disc. <laughs> Valerie Moeller. We're tied 2 2. Müller, one of the Wood Sheikah's staples, is very well known in Europe. You might not know her name here in Dubai, but she's clearly making a great debut on the beaches of Dubai. What was your experience like playing Ultimate in Germany? Well, I was there for a study abroad program for an entire summer, and while I didn't play with a single team the entire time, uh, it was a great way for me to see Germany. Every weekend I traveled to a different tournament and picked up with a different team. Um, I did get to know the Woodshikas the best simply because they let me practice with them during the week. Uh, Tournaments are a little bit different in Germany. Everyone camp, camps out. There's a little more of a camaraderie atmosphere. Really enjoyed my time, met a lot of really fun people while I was there. How late did the Saturday night party usually go? <laughs> Sometimes until dawn. Assessing points occasionally necessary in Germany. If folks oversleep. That one hauled in by Berg. And Berg again. <laughs> Yolan Cabo the assist. Cabo undoubtedly grateful of that disc started to drop just a little too soon. Fantastic effort from Berg keeping that disc alive and bringing in the point for Canada. Take a stock of where we are in this game. And at 3-2, I say Germany's offense has looked pretty good. Canada has relied a little bit more on the big play, but they have the athletes to do it. I like the cohesiveness that Germany has, but will the big play impact the defense on the, the, the defensive side for Team Canada? Because that's where they need to get the breaks in order to make it for the fact that they're going to play a more high risk, higher reward scenario. There might not be a more cohesive team in the entire tournament, mixed men's, women's, masters, whatever, than this Germany mixed team because of the extensive tryout process, because of the tournaments they went to as a team. They actually played Beach Ultimate in Berlin when the field was covered in snow and ice. I asked if they wore cleats, and Michael Remy told me, no, we wore socks. And I asked, is that cold? He said, yes, very <laughs> cold. They could only play for about 90 minutes or so. Imagine that, running around on the ice in socks to prepare for this beautiful beach atmosphere in Dubai. I don't know. I didn't it have makes to... you happier being in the booth, I bet. That's right. I didn't have to go out ahead and run outside in socks in upstate New York to come here to be prepared for the beach. I have to say, I'm not so sure I'd be tough enough to make the German mixed team if that was the test they underwent to make it. So we're tied 3-3, game to 13. Soft cap goes on at 45 minutes. 45 meter field from one end zone to the other in the playing field proper, 15 meter end zones to work with in length. Cabo hits Norton underneath. This Canadian team hasn't played together as much as the Germany team, but they have shown some pretty consistent chemistry, especially with their top players, Cabo, Norton, Berg. These three very rarely make mistakes like this one. Four years ago, Germany in the finals, 
losing to the United States mixed team. So some of the German players were pining for that rematch. And the USA would not oblige. Canadians interrupting that fate. All the same, Rudiger Vital, the captain of the mixed team, said that this is going to be the best day of their lives. They're going to play like this is the only game they have left. That disc not able to be caught by Judith Beckendorf. I don't know, Megan, I think me and you, every time we compliment a team, something bad is going to happen, <laughs> so maybe we should just be critical. Norden hits Jordan Marin. Back for Cabo. And the stars of the Montreal Royale and the AUDL over to Norden. Mowens to Cabo. 4-3, Canada. No one's going to be able to keep up with Cabo over the course of this game. He hasn't quit. He doesn't show a sign of fatigue throughout this tournament. And with that fresh of legs against a, defense, a German defense line, I think Cabo could be the big difference in this one. Just like we saw Norton in some windier games put the team on his back with his throws. Brian, I agree. I think he's been getting better and better this entire tournament. I've just watched him become more dominant, more confident in the throws that he's making and the cuts that he's making. It's making him a very, very hard defender for any team, let alone the Germans in the finals to cover. Cabot actually led the Canadian team in assists over the course of the tournament. He had 19. That's the same number that Jeremy Norden had, so they share that lead in the assist category. Matthew Berg was a leading goal scorer for the Canadians. Meanwhile, the German team just displayed such remarkable balance. Despite only losing one game all week, no one from Germany was in the top 30 goal scorers in the mixed division. David Pimenta of Portugal led the mixed division with 37. Here's a deep shot to some height. What a grab. Thomas Zormeyer uses his reach and his length to tie this puppy up. And Edwards walks away upset. The Canadian defender number 80 had a shot at the disc. And he's sitting there going, oh, if I only I had jumped sooner and actually tried to make a play on it. Edwards has been on the great side of some athletic Ds that we've seen throughout this tournament, just not that time. So Zormeyer Hall is in the tying goal. We're even at four. David Pimenta of Portugal led the mixed division with 37 scores, far and away the leader. Anders Dahlberg of Sweden was up there as well. No one from Germany in the top 30, but seven different German players have between eight and ten goals. That's the type of balance that we're talking about on the standing statistics. You can just see a clump of German players all bunched together between those eight and ten goals all contributing. That's, that's a great statistic in that Germany is such a well-rounded team. But I have to wonder, when the Germans get into a tight game, who do they rely on to get the job done? Do they just send out the next line, or who's going to emerge for them to be the top playmaker? It's a great question. This is Cabo underneath, shoots a high release backhand. Berg tries to stay in bounds. The greatest attempt, but no one nearby to complete the miraculous play. Germany lets it fly. And well defended by Cabo. How many times are we going to say his name? It seems like he's the only one up there sometimes for Canada. Rue Vital, the captain among the German leaders in assists. Also, Josef Ebner. And now the Germans playing defense. And it's Norden. Who else? Cabo over to Berg. Oh, a deep shot looking for Jordan Marin. You can just get the sense that Canada wants to get this done in a hurry here. Both teams taking deep shots, looking to strike very quickly. Canada, 
Just have Adam Goff step into the booth. To grab a quick refreshing drink here. Winner of the Grandmasters. Yeah, one of the craziest finishes that you'll see in this sport. A 5-0 run to win a championship at the world level. Grandmasters got their game in early. They've been enjoying the afternoon at the beach. I don't even, Evan, it's been a long day already. A lot of finals. I can't believe we're on our fifth one. Sorry, seventh, really, after two days. It's an incredible experience, and it's almost finished. Uncharacteristic drop from Julie Mullins. Johanna Schock. Foul called on the mark. Tied at four in this mixed championship game. Shook up the field. This is Victoria Mueller. And now they slow it up with Yosha Fuchs. Fuchs connects with Mueller. Germany exhibiting patience. He wanted that break. Good mark by Cabo to prevent it. So they take the fourth side and they make the play. Anna Bush has the score. And Germany has his first lead. Sometimes that's what it comes down to in these games is who commits the most unforced errors. In this case, turnover by Canada. Germany does not hesitate to convert. Royce with the score there. Vital named him the most well-rounded player on the team. He can do anything and is incredibly fast, young, and athletic. Team Germany no doubt happy he was on the field that point. The mixture of colors and cultures in the crowd is remarkable. Great shot from our Dubai sports production team. Even very grateful to work with them these past five days. Cowper Smith will trigger the offense. Over to Josh Marin. Jonathan Edwards back on the field. Good to see. Hannah Epperson and Aaron Daly round out the Canadian line. This is Edwards for Marin. Underneath to Epperson. She airs one out. The two females on the Canadian line dial long distance for the score. More of the type of fearlessness I like to see in these types of games. Can't play afraid. Have to play with utmost confidence in your abilities. The Germans were hoping to come out with a backhand force that would really stymie the Canadian offense. Uh, Hugh believes that it's a little bit harder to throw the backhand in this win, so you notice putting on a really flat backhanded mark. All the same, didn't take away that long put from Epperson. I think the wind has died down enough that that may have been a viable strategy just 30 to 40 minutes ago, but we're looking at a situation where these are talented throwers that are able to, get, going to be able to get the job done. Look around the stands, and there's a lot of the very beginnings of goodbyes after a great week that nobody wants to see end. Some jersey exchanges, post folks looking to trade to acquire the finest jerseys from another culture that they can bring back home. So off to my left, Chena Titcom wearing a, a UAE Women's Ultimate shirt to commemorate this gold medal experience. And that's over the reach of the arm. Nicholas Fink couldn't get there. Right 
So about midway through this game, just beyond the halfway mark to the soft cap. Neither team has led by more than one. Germany is up a break. Canada started on offense. Basically on serve here. Edwards for Cabo. This Canadian team usually, that first look is always deep. Until stall three, stall four, they're looking long. They like to be efficient with the disc. They don't want to run too much and waste their time going down the field bit by bit. And that's really the contrasting styles you're seeing in this game against Team Germany. Again, we it's a 5-5 Germany getting that break. It's going to be pivotal. Can Team Canada take enough, get enough of their high-risk, high-reward scenarios from the convert on those? That will be the question later in this game. Foul call. Foul call on the mark. This one will come back. Still a pretty good showing for the United States this week. Six gold medals in the seven divisions, also one bronze. And the question of who will join the U.S. with a little gold flavor still to be decided. Will it be Canada or Germany? And it's an uncharacteristic mistake from Edwards. Scooped up by Vital. Breaks the mark with a great pivot. An underappreciated part of the game, the quick pivot and the extension to get that throw off and make it look easy. Something that you're starting to see more internationally, those quick pivots. It's interesting to see how throws permeate through the ultimate culture over time. We see the prominence of lefties entering the game about two to three years ago, maybe even further back. Before that, 10 years ago when we first started, Evan, you throwing a lefty would get you kicked out of practice pretty quick. So Germany leading 6-5. Up a break. Germany will receive out of the half. Which will come when a team reaches seven. Norden for Berg. Not out there with Cabot, but instead Cowper Smith. Swing to Berg. Jordan Marin. Couldn't hit Norton on the dump, so she lets it fly deep and turns it over. And that defense has to go all the credit to that dump defender. Yes, no, I think uh, Germany right now is doing a good job of face guarding, which is definitely frustrating Team Canada. Team Canada, in that case, when the defender is not looking at the disc position, it just has to be thrown. Uh, there has to be a decisiveness in the way you got it. Norton was open. He needed to be thrown open by the dump itself, though. Right? Letting that one fly, and that'll soar untouched into the end zone. There's a miscommunication between Mueller and Fuchs there. You saw she, she took her face away from downfield for just a split second, didn't realize that Fuchs had turned and was starting to cut in, as opposed to continuing his look long. Norden marked tightly by Roish. This is Berg. And Berg calls for timeout. So the Canadians want a breather, sensing the vital nature of this point right here. 
If Canada gets broken, then Germany takes half, 7-5, and receives the disc on the next point. Pretty much a must score for Team Canada going in that second half. While we have a moment, guys, I wanted to ask you, we've seen a lot of teams here in the semis and the finals, a lot of other countries as well, tons of different flavors. What's one team, one country that you've really enjoyed watching, Megan, that you hadn't gotten a chance to see very much before? I've said it before, and my answer remains the same. India absolutely blew the doors off my expectations. I really enjoyed watching not only the skill that they exhibit, but also the team camaraderie the entire time. I feel like I had goosebumps that game just because the energy was high and remained so high throughout the game. A very exciting program uh, and a very fantastic first international look at the ultimate program that India is developing. I think if I had to pick one, it would be the Philippines. They were an exciting team to watch in all divisions and the way they competed and the way they played. Take a look at the drone actually out in the field trying to get some shots. They didn't have that at Worlds 2004. <laughs> What do you think we'll remember about the Philippines this week? I think I think a lot of people are going to take away the spirit circle, spirit timeout that happened at the end of that USA game, but they're an exciting team to watch. Over some traffic, and what a grab! Jordan Marin, full extension for Canada. She had one shot to make that. Kept her hand in exactly the right position. Big time grab right there. When her team needed someone to make a play, it was Jordan Marin who stepped up. Toronto native ties it at six. Remarkable to have the dichotomy, the massive buildings, the beautiful beach. The city has it all. So Germany will receive here, trying to take it to half. There won't be a long break for halftime, but whether Germany scores here or Canada scores here, Germany will receive the next pull. Such a luxury here, Brian, to be able to try and score and then receive that next pull. Yeah, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense in general when you're in these positions. It's a common situation in ultimate. Usually you have a timeout available, but in beach ultimate you only have one. Zormeyer threads the needle for Fuchs to the end zone, and it falls incomplete. Not able to match toe-to-toe -to -toe with Marin's layout. Juggling the catch, but able to hang on. Veronique Riopelle to the end zone for Canada. Hannah Epperson takes her team to the half, up 7-6, and that's a break. We're right back on serve here in the mixed final. Yeah, as we head into halftime, Team Germany has to, to remember to play their game, and that's what I would be confident in. Canada is going to play a high-risk, high-reward strategy. Keep using your lines that you have been. Keep your energy up. Let your smooth offense take over, and I think that will hold true. And for Canada, they're playing the opposite way. They want to keep bombing it deep, and when they have the confidence and energy, they feel like everything is going to work out for them. Now the Canadians have scored twice in a row since their timeout. And Germany with the pressure on its shoulders at the moment, needing to convert on this offensive point to avoid falling behind by 
multiple scores for the first time. Doesn't look like we're going to get to 13 in this one either. Underneath, nearly a D from Catherine Biao. A foul called. Germany keeps the disc. Now one of the great touches of the format here is that any team that won today can't just take off and go celebrate. They've got to wait for their medals, which will be awarded after all the championship games are done. There'll be a procession of champions on the field. Canada trying to join that party. Yeah, we just saw Team USA after their open victory go into the ocean for a little bit before coming back to get their jerseys, having a final team meeting. A very festive atmosphere has been built on the edge of this beautiful beach and a hand block on the mark. Well done by the captain, Rue Vital, and Germany has tied it up. Vital is eligible to play on the Grandmasters team and is playing an absolutely vital role in this mixed final, showing that experience is worth a lot more than youth. Old age treachery will overcome youth and enthusiasm, as my dad always tells me. <laughs> so Germany and Canada even 14 points in. 15 seconds. Have you seen Germany as the more cohesive team here, or has this been right down the middle so far? I think Germany got out of their game a little bit and just didn't, they need to believe in what they have as a system because that's what got them to this point. And Canada is going to go through these ebbs and flows where they make some big plays and then they get hand blocked on the goal line. That's the nature of this Canadian team is live and die by the sword. Big layout, unsuccessful though. Jordan Marin again comes up with a disc near the sand. Norden breaks the mark, seeking Cabot. Tremendous defense there from Malta Blanc. He didn't get the disc, but he forced Cabot to make the adjustment. And that was the fatal end of the Canadian hope on that hook. It's not too often, I think, that you get teams that are so evenly matched coming to a game like this. We, we saw close games, but not, not teams where you, you didn't really have an inkling of how the game would go. This one is it's tough to figure out as a prognosticator of, of what's going to happen next. I agree, Brian, especially 36 minutes, 37 now into the game. Usually there was a little more clear, decisive finish ahead. Germany back in front. Tremendous flow from the European team, and they lead 8 7. And as we creep closer to the cap to have that one up, like Germany's possessing right now, so important. And who's going to make the corresponding play for Team Canada? It's been Epperson, it's been Edwards in the past, it's been Jordan Marin. Somebody needs to step up and bring the energy back to their side because they're kind of subdued coming off of that break point. Uh, Germany has had more excitement on the field after their scores. And also I think the excitement from the crowd, there's a lot of German fans and in general you're battling a North American power, power part of the royalty of International Ultimate. You know, Canadian fan, fans will get some support when they are playing the US. I'm quite sure that the majority of this crowd is on the German side. Brickmark identified by 
a blue cone on the sidelines. Marin high throw, but Edwards has it. Epperson cutting deep, not a throwing angle. So it's Josh Marin. Nope, not going to work. Situation here, Germany's gone through a semi-long point. Legs are a little tired. This is a great time to center the disc, be very patient. Dump swing a couple of different times. They're giving it to you. And just try to get the motion going. So many different German players have been involved. Here's a deep shot, looking for Fuchs. Joscha Fuchs, Germany by two. The fortuitous wind bounce over the defender, giving no chance to Team Canada. You see the German depth starting to be a factor here? I do, and I've said this before about Team Canada. I feel like when they rely on just a few individuals on their team, the rest of the team starts to play down as a result. Things are really looking the way of Edwards, Greenberg, Yolen Cabot, Epperson. The whole team needs to elevate if they want to maintain the intensity that they've had so far. On the other side of the fence, Germany doesn't have a set offense. They don't have their set superstars. It's taken them a little while to start to gel and coalesce in this specific game, but we're starting to see that comfort level that has brought them to the finals in the first place. As I mentioned earlier, no one in this Germany team among the top 30 goal scorers. And when you think about that, how many goals they scored on route to winning the pool is pretty remarkable. But seven different goal scorers with between eight and 10 goals, it's so balanced. Malta Blanc had 10, Valerie Moeller, Josef Ebner each had nine. Johannes Fuchs, Thomas Zormeyer, Anne Rausch, and Nicholas Fink each had eight. This is a prayer from Norden. Berg in the vicinity, and it's spiked to the ground by Remy. Germany starting to taste it four minutes from the soft cap. Remy very careful with that D there. He was cognizant of Berg behind him, jumped early to make sure that he was the one who got that disc for his team. To the end zone, Germany's in control now. The layout grab from Malta Blanc. He was the leading scorer, just barely. And he finds the end zone here in the finals. Quite a lot of zip on that disc by Margit Müller, knowing that the disc had quite a ways to travel before it would be in her teammate's hand. Yet still needed to put that outside in to ensure that no Canadian defense could touch it. We've arrived at the magic number that we've seen almost all week long, although it was broken earlier today with the Grandmasters comeback. Of course, you're talking about the margin of a lead that seems impossible to overcome. Yeah, three-point lead in this game has been invaluable, and with three minutes to go, with the energy all on the German side, somebody needs to be the fire starter for Team Canada. It needs to be a big play. It needs to happen soon. Cowper Smith in traffic gets it to Marin. Veronique Riopel, dangerous throw, but able to haul it in. Cowper Smith. You know, Evan, I don't understand this defensive call. It may end up working. But when your when your man to man person to person defense has been working out, why are you going away from something that works? And so there's there may be something here that the Germans know that I don't, and it may work out even so. But Michael Remy did say to me before the game, we want to switch up our defenses, try to get in their heads. Tyler Smith can't come down with it for Canada. Off the deflection, he had a second chance. So Germany trying to put the finishing touches on a gold medal performance. A 
think I think the, it's an adamant goal to want to switch things up early in a game and and see what what works best against teams. But we're not we're not early in a game. These are pivotal points for Team Germany that could lead to a gold medal. And I would stick with what I knew worked. In the end, they get the D. All the same, that seems to have worked for Germany all throughout this tournament, is keeping things fresh, keeping things move, moving. Although Vita believes that the best defense in ultimate is a hard man, I think because in the past, giving different looks has given them opportunities. Couple that with the fact that we really haven't seen the Germans make great contests deep for those jump balls. Wasn't exactly sure what we would see if a big disc went up. It looks like they can hang with even the tough, tall Canadian team. Timeout called by Germany, their only timeout of the game. Trying to assault this one away. The action began here in Dubai on Sunday afternoon, the opening ceremonies. And it was the U.S. women against Germany, the showcase game on International Women's Day. Full days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then bracket play really ramped up. The intensity ratcheted up on Thursday here. The championships being decided over the last 20 five hours or so. Not a clean sweep for the USA, but a very impressive run nonetheless. And with a soft cap going on after this point, Canada sort of in a must break situation. Otherwise, the Canadians would need a 5-0 run, which we have seen today. And the Germans just turned it over. Sometimes out of the timeout, you flow so smoothly, and sometimes you kill your flow with a stoppage. Marin plays it back. Cowper Smith. Off the hands of one Canadian and into the hands of another. How about that? Rio Pell couldn't haul it in. Cowper Smith in the right place at the right time. Canada still showing some signs of life. And you can just see the energy they get by scoring, and they get really down on themselves after a break, but it's why I just, you never can count them out of any situation is it took one play for past teams like Furious George to get back in any given game. And it could take one play for Team Canada to get going. And I think it's probably good news for the Canadians. They just announced that it's one minute until cap, so the cap not on yet despite the graphic we've got on the screen. So, Blakely on after this point. But this is not game point for Germany, not yet. Zormeyer for Fink. Vital. Through the hands of Zormeyer. So Norden calmly approaches the disc. The Canadian quarterback restarts play with Cabot. Foul was called. Norden knocked over Zeitel. Cabot will restart play. Jeremy Norton lives in Portland, Oregon, but has dual citizenship. His mother Canadian, the Whitman product, leading this Canadian team. Cabot for Norton. 
One of the final points of the weekend on this beach. And Canada has scored two in a row to bring themselves back in the discussion. And you love this type of throw, the length from Norton to execute. Sometimes it doesn't matter at the end of the game. For a player like Norton that's played a lot of points, he will rise to the occasion and he can still sum up in the tank. Absolutely, stretching out long and low in that point pass to even longer vital. And then putting just enough lift, lift on that disc so that it didn't sink right into the ground. Guys, we have either one or two points remaining in the tournament. The cap is on. Game to 11. Canada needs to break Germany twice to win an improbable gold. If Canada were to pull this thing out, they would have beaten the gold medalist and the silver medalist from four years ago. Nishi Schulenberg receives the disc. And underneath, it's Blanc. Schulenberg airs it out, looking for Moeller. She's got it! Germany has taken gold in the mixed division. Fantastic read from Müller. You could see how much she wanted that disc. Her eyes never left the prize, knowing exactly what would happen if she pulled it in over the end zone line, fought for position, and ripped that one out of the sky, landing both feet securely in her own end zone. And at a time when Canada lived and died by the hawk, you see Germany complete one for the win. And they stayed true to themselves for the majority of this game, and that's what you like to see. Big play when they needed it most. So it's six golds for the United States and one gold for Germany. Europe gets the gold and the Canadians are shut out from the top of the podium here on the beach in Dubai. 11 to nine as Germany takes gold after winning silver in Italy four years ago. And there will be specials all night long. No rest food. A remarkable week coming to an end here in Dubai. The 2015 Beach Championships of Ultimate are over. Eleven nine Germany over Canada. We'll have video coverage of the medal ceremony for each of the divisions that played today. But it is time for us to say so long. It has been a pleasure bringing you this ultimate, a thrill of a lifetime. Brian, Megan, it's been an honor to work alongside you guys this week. Pleasure's all mine. Thanks, Evan. Thanks, Megan. Thank you guys as well. This was a beautiful setting for a fantastic tournament full of so many nail-biting games. Really have been on the edge of my seat so much, so much of the time during this tournament, especially here. A great day of finals in Dubai. Incredible drama, some great Peach Ultimate, and the World Championships waged here in the United Arab Emirates, the first international tournament in the Middle East. And I don't see how anyone could say anything else than it's a remarkable success. So for everyone with Dubai Sports, our crew did a phenomenal job. Producer Najib and Michael, our conduit to the truck, all the cameramen, graphics operators, audio technicians, and everyone else who is a part of this tremendous tournament. We say so long from the streets and the beaches of Dubai. For Megan Tormey and Brian Jones, I'm Evan Leffler. Thanks so much for being with us. Germany takes gold in the mixed division to cap off a tremendous week on the beach. So long from Dubai, everybody. <laughs>